Havok DH is a good contender to be the best Mythic Plus pack in the game, so if you are new to Havok or just want some extra knowledge, you have come to the right place. Hey everyone, my name is Cream D. I'm a top 100 Havoc in Mythic Plus, and I'm currently trialing as a Havoc for the official Noko Guild. You can find me streaming on twitch.tv slash creamd. In this Mythic Plus guide for Havoc, I want to go over dungeons, which talents to run on which weeks, and some great tips to help your group to push those keys. If you're looking for some specific thing, I've put up timestamps so you can skip to that part, but I do recommend watching the whole video. Alright, starting with talents, there are only two talent builds that I recommend in Mythic Plus. The Throw Glaive build, which focuses on Essence Break Windows, Momentum and Soul Rend. This build has more AoE and uh, less single target damage. The second build is a No Momentum build, which has more of a focus on single target damage, while also providing good AoE from Essence Break Windows, Glaive Tempest and Inner Demon. I will link both of these builds in the description, so feel free to copy and paste them into while using the import talent option. I know some people prefer to play without momentum, and I think it's a viable option to only run the second build that doesn't run momentum, if you so wish. There's also a tweak you can do on the spec tree on Sanguine Weeks, that is to replace Fell Eruption with Mortal Dance. This makes it so monsters only heal 50% from sources such as Sanguine after you Blade Dance. It's an optim option, but definitely not something you have to do. As far as rotation goes, on the screen you can see the basic Essence Break combos. You can use the No Momentum combo during Lust even when playing the Glaive build with Momentum, but otherwise you probably won't have enough haste to fit in two blade dances, as you won't be running the talent that gives haste after eye beaming. Now while playing the no momentum build, your eye, will, eye beam will be out of sync with essence break. When this happens, it's good to hold essence break for around 10 seconds if your eye beam is still on cooldown, but you don't want to wait on using eye beam if essence break is on cooldown. Getting used to this cycle might take some time, but after a while of playing, it should come pretty naturally to you. You also want to use Glaive Tempest on cooldown. Now when it comes to the hunt, both builds are using it. You want to use it on cooldown, and if you can line it with Vengeful Retreat, that's good for the extra crit chance from initiative. You want to hit the hunt as, on as many targets as you possibly can, even if you don't travel through your targets with the hunt, you have a small window after hitting your target to spread the hunt debuff by attacking and going over nearby enemies. You should try and do this every time you use the hunt. Now when optimizing damage, the biggest mistake I see when looking at newer or less experienced players is holding cooldowns. Try to use your metamorphosis and other big abilities such as the hunt and essence break as much as you can, even if it's not the most optimal place to use them. When you have some experience using your cooldowns, you will start to learn the best times to use them, but especially when you're a beginner, it's really important that you get to use your abilities. More casts of an ability usually is better than less casts, even if they would be better casts. If you are enjoying the video so far, make sure you drop a like, uh, comment and subscribe. Alright, next up I want to go over the dungeons and things you can do in them to help your team time harder dungeons. Alright, starting off with Ruby, there is a few important trash mobs to look out for. In the area before first boss, there are only a few important mobs. The Chill Weavers cast an Ice Bolt on tank, but more importantly, they can channel an Ice Shield on enemies. You want to stop this cast. It also creates a purgeable buff that makes it so you can't CC the shielded target. If it goes on the Earth Shaper, you want to instantly purge it, because the Earth Shapers cast an AoE damage ability that can only be stopped by CC. There are also a few damaging zone casts, on the floor occasionally on these packs, so you want to just dodge them. Lastly, on the dragon mob, he has an 
charge ability, which it has to dodge. Not dodging it will most likely put you on floor POV. Now, the first boss is pretty simple as a DPS player. Just dodge the areas on the floor, and if you get targeted, take the big AoE away from the, your group. Blurring this mechanic also is a good idea. On higher tyrannical keys, you might want to save some damage for this shield that comes uh, twice per fight. The first shield is at 70% health, and the second one is around 45% health. After the first boss, there are two dragons and some other mobs. The general, general strategy here is to kill the lightning dragon and skip the fire. The fire dragon patrol makes it pretty easy to skip, so you should do that even on tyrannical weeks. When fighting the lightning dragon, using defensive on the debuff is a good idea. Cinder weavers and flame dancers can be knocked up with the living bomb to help keeping them CC'd. You have to stop uh, the flame dance cast by CCing the mob. Cinder weavers also get a buff that you can purge, with increase, which increases haste, uh, but also increases damage taken. So if your team can uh, keep them interrupted, it's better to keep the buff up. Defensives are generally used on the Inferno casts. On the second boss, the Add and the Boulder are both casted on random players. You want to bait the Add forward on your route while baiting the Boulder backwards. Other than that, just kill the Add and interrupt it. On the Trash before last boss, Storm Warriors cast Thunderclap, which is a small radius, so if your healer is struggling, you can outrange it. Most important interrupts are on the Flame Channeler. High Channel Ruvari also has a shield that blows up if it's not destroyed, so you want to target that. It grows on size depending on how many small mobs had a shield nearby, so if you can purge some off before that's good. On the last boss, you want to prioritize damage on the dragon. When you have a circle around you, you will take some damage and drop uh, pools of fire around you. Just don't live in the middle and you should be fine. When the boss goes into phase 2 at 50% health, you want to use all CDs and lust on the dragon. Once the dragon is dead, just finish off the other guy and you should, uh, should be good. Uh, just as a side note, I want to point out during storming week, DH is an uh, excellent candidate in soaking the stormies can you can just uh, double jump back into an optimal position. Next up, Shadow Moon is a pretty easy dungeon compared to the rest. There are only a few things I want to mention here. So at the start of the dungeon, it's pretty simple, so I'll just jump into the first boss. On the first boss, during the Dark Eclipse, just go into a light zone and watch out after that, that you're not standing in uh, the AOE pools on the ground, when the ground is still dark. Kill the add and blur slash darkness when the AOE damage pulse comes. On the trash packs after that, the caster mobs are con constantly casting to buff the melee mobs. You can choose to not interrupt them, which makes the tank damage a bit higher, and the pack will take a bit longer, but uh, all of the channelers do nothing. If you interrupt them, you will have to keep ceasing and interrupting the casters. All of their casts are important to interrupt, but domination mind controls the player, so that's a higher priority. Next up, Exhumers rise two mobs from the closest two graves. These mobs have a purgeable shield and low HP, so just purge that. You have to CC or interrupt uh, in higher keys, because they will one-shot you if they cast. You can save your stuns for the grave mob and just interrupt the Exhumer. One thing to note, if you pull the two exhumers on top of each other, they will try to make the same two graves spawn, which will only spawn two mobs. The second boss is just a DPS and dodge boss, basically. You will get sent to a spirit realm where you have to kill a weak ad and click the corpse. This gives a 40% damage buff, so maybe you can try saving something for that moment. After defeating the second boss, there is a grave that will spawn a mob, unless you trigger it during the boss fight. So you should uh, do that right, right as the boss is about to die. <clears throat> the pack after that is the same after first boss. On the parts with the bats and spiders, it's crucial 
to interrupt every spider cast. One melee kick can handle one spider on its own. The bats can also be CC'd uh, and they have a, le a less important cast as well. Before third boss, the worms just do a frontal, so don't stand in that. Third boss does a suck, which throws you in the water and unless you stand in the grey AoE the boss shoots. You should tell your team to stack in melee to bait the pool so you can DPS. Kill the adds, dodge the frontals, and that's about it. The boss hitbox is also a bit weird, so some of your AoE abilities might not hit it. Surely Blizzard will fix it soon. The void spawns before last boss uh, do high AoE damage and spawn missiles that hit the ground. Use defensives and burst one of the void spawns down with CDs. You can also line of sight the AoE in higher keys. On the last boss, a ranged player has to bait the AoE circle away from the boss. It does drop off damage, so the further you are the better. Then just dodge the AoE cast from the boss and focus one add on the wall. If you get hit by the wall, use blur and try to live it, but uh, you, wa you probably won't live it. Uh, next up, Nokud Offensive. Uh, Nokud Offensive is a longer dungeon with a few hard bosses. Uh, on the Dragon Trash, you have to interrupt Disruptive Shout, not stand in War Stump and CC Rally Dead Clan. Other than that, dodge the AoE and don't stand in front of the Lance Masters. As their melee attack is a cleave. The dragon boss has an ad you have to kill or CC. Don't stand in the stomp cast. And as soon as the lance is ready, you should press it. Thundering can be risky here because of the stomp, so make sure you clear safely. The trash before storm boss consists a lot of casters. You want to prioritize interrupting or seizing the tempest cast. Just stun and interrupt the storm bolts. And the Primalist also spawn more trash, so seizing that cast is good. The Storm Shield mobs cast a shield that you can purge. Around the boss is also a patrolling code though. If you are targeted by the chain lightning on that pack, you want to walk out uh, of your team as it will chain otherwise. The packs with the totem also spawn orbs that you can pick up for a small damage buff. During the elemental boss fight, you will have the same orbs. You want to have 10 stacks of the orb for as long as you can. Your team should uh, spread and soak the orbs evenly. The damage part uh, of the boss is pretty chill on DH as you always have a blur up for it. The boss, al boss also casts energy surge which should be purged ASAP. I recommend emphasizing this mechanic on your boss mods, so you don't miss it. Uh, the trash leading to the twin boss mainly has some AoE uh, areas on the ground that you have to dodge. And some interrupts. You can also stun most of the mobs and imprison some. If the swift wind cast goes through, you're playing Balladelf, you can uh, mass purge with Ar Arcane Torrent. Otherwise, the Death Bolt Volley is one of the highest prio casts to interrupt. The Twin Boss has one dangerous part where it can shoot a player right after Gale Arrow. You want to use health pots and defensives to survive this part. You can also stack all of the Gale Arrows to make dodging the tornadoes easier. Other than that, it's only dodging uh, AoE and dealing damage for DPS. There is a trick uh, in getting onto the next boss by flying where I'm flying on the screen now. It saves some time and that's why I recommend killing the twin boss last. Before the last boss there are two big trash mobs. These get pulled with the boss unless they enter combat before the boss gets pulled. There you can fang death or shadow meld, etc. the mobs uh, and they will reset. So you can kill the boss without killing them. Uh, I don't recommend doing this unless it's discussed with the group before, as it does limit the boss room by quite a bit. And pulling them during the boss fight might cause a wipe. Uh, the last boss has two phases and an intermission. 
You want to use defensives when you are targeted by the singular AoE zone and just spread the upheaval. In the intermission, you want to interrupt and gather the adds, stun them, imp interrupt them, and kill them off. Then phase 2 begins. In the second phase, the singular AoE zone also pulls everyone to it, and upheaval leaves some damaging zones behind. There will also be lightning circles on the ground, similar to thundering spawns. These probably will one-shot you, so you want to dodge them. Alright, next dungeon is Temple of the Jade Serpent. This is a pretty quick one. Water Speaker's title burst has to be interrupted. A few Hydro Bolts probably won't wipe the group, but the tidal burst will. Corrupted Living Water casts Tainted Ripple, which does a lot of AoE damage. You can use line of sight to dodge this ability to survive in higher keys. The first boss has a few mechanics. A random player will get targeted by an AoE circle. This will also drop a pool on the ground so just drop it off to the side if you get it. The water also does damage periodically after pulsing three times first. The boss will also cast a beam that goes around in a circle. During this time the water pulses damage more often. The boss also has a hydro lance cast, so just interrupt that. Just try to stay on the floor and don't panic. The trash going into the next boss can be tough. The monks randomly throw a torch debuff on players. If you know your healer doesn't have a dispel ready, you need to use a defensive. The hunting shaw will cast a fear that you have to interrupt or CC. CCing this makes it so that it doesn't recast. The talking fish only casts a sleep on the tank, so you have to interrupt it. Lesser shaw blow up when they die, dealing some pretty nasty damage. This damage can be line of sighted. The bird does like an AoE pulse around itself. You can dip in and DPS or use blade dance outside of the range of the AoE to still deal damage. On the last pack, every ability is best CC'd or interrupted. If the beetle gets golden barrier cast off, you want to purge it as soon as you can. The hosen's cast can also be soothed if it goes through. The next boss is pretty simple. Just DPS one boss to around 7 stacks and swap targets. You can do some cleave, but overdoing it might make them reach 10 stacks, and then the boss will get immune to damage. On Tyrannical Week, you might also want to give uh, the healer the debuff that buffs damage and healing done, as the healing requirement is pretty high on this boss. There's also a strategy to DPS one of the bosses to maximum stacks before switching. It's probably a bug, but that stops damage from that boss. Next up, the Mistweaver's cast is very important to CC or interrupt. Don't stand in the leg sweep or the frontal from Shambling Infester. Other than that, this trash is pretty simple before the first or third boss. Now the third boss is a tank and healer check, as long as no one stands in the AoE. Just try your best to deal the most damage during the Jade phase. Be careful when the boss transitions to last phase at around 30% HP, as the tank won't have aggro on the serpent that spawns. The trash before last boss is all old monsters. On the last big pull before the last boss, you may want to CC a mob or two to survive the pull. Now on the last boss, you want to spread during the normal phase. Use a defensive if you see the healer dispel uh, the other person before you. A warlock using imp or a priest with mass dispel also helps a lot on this boss, as they can help out with the dispels. On the intermission, you just want to stack, CC and burst down the adds, and that's about it. Uh, next up is Academy. The biggest hurdles in this dungeon is uh, the tree boss and elemental boss. For damage, you want to pick up the black dragonflight buff, or uh, for survivability, the verse or healing taken buff. On the trash before elemental boss, you have to stop the mystic blast from the scepter and the lecture cast from unru unruly books. 
The battle axes also do a lot of tank damage, so stunning them uh, on their cast can help out. On the boss you want to use blur if you get mana bomb while dropping it on the side as it leaves some AoE on the ground. Soak the orbs before they reach the boss, but watch out cause they give a stacking damage tick and increased debuff. The knockback ability also drops an AoE circle every second for 3 times uh, at your location, so make sure you don't get hit by those. During tree boss, make sure you don't panic, stack on the tank and rotate during germinate. Cast without running ahead, uh, and it should be a pretty easy boss, and it ha has gotten nerfed a few times. Also make sure you stand in the green AoE from the big ad to clear the dot. Alright, during the bird boss, not getting hit is crucial. And if playing momentum, make sure you don't get hit by any of the fire so circles or tornadoes. They will one-shot you and make the fight a lot harder. Every cast of Deafening Screech does more damage, and the only way to reset it, the damage is by throwing the balls into the goals, which you can only do two times in a fight, so it's a DPS check. Just don't die and you should be fine. When you throw in the balls, the fire goal, the boss will get stunned and get a damage take and increase debuff for around 10 seconds. Fire AoE will also start spawning. Throwing balls into the other side will make a permanent wind effect, pushing you back and uh, make tornado spawn. There will also spawn some haste buff orbs around the arena, so make uh, sure you pick one up. In the last trash area, you can stun the AoE from the mobs or use feral sigil on them. Make sure you interrupt arcane missiles also. Arcane orb can also be used to damage the mobs. So make sure you use it on that. The last boss is pretty easy. You have to dodge the area damage and breath from the boss. Other than that, just make sure you don't disband your group like now did. Because that makes you teleport out of the dungeon and probably throw the key. For Halls of Valor, it should be noted, every caster in this dungeon can be interrupted by CC, with one exception being the Rune Carvers. They have to finish the startup channel for Edge before it can be CC to stop the casting. One of the most important casts is Holy Radiance from Mystics, which heals all enemies by 30% in an area. The Shield Maidens have a really big frontal range, and if you're not careful, you might get killed by them. It should be noted that Sentinels have an aura which prevents all CC and interrupts, so pulling these with the casters, especially Mystics, is a very bad idea. The first boss can be can only kill you with Dancing Blades or the Dragon's Lightning bre Breath slash Ball Lightning, so dodge those and you're good to go. A good tip if you want to double pull the two big trash mobs before Herja is to pull the Sanctify mob when the shield is active. That way their casts are staggered and you can deal with the mechanics separately. For Herja, you want to blur and darkness on the lightning shield part. Other than that, just dodge the shield of light frontal, sanctify and DPS boss. On Fenrir, you can dodge the bleed jump by fell rushing away before it reaches your location. This will help out the healer a lot if you don't have a rogue or hunter to bug out the jump. The kings can be chain pulled by throwing beer on an inactive king and then dragging the active king on top of him. The beers can be fall in the hall. This will help uh, a lot in smoothing out that part of the dungeon. On the first boss, God King Skovald, hide behind the shield and don't kill the boss during Ragnarok. If he dies during the cast, your tank's shield will despawn. Uh, but one list, last tick will still go through of the cast, that can wipe your team. On Odin, you can use an essence break window once before the damage buffing runes. Kill the add and use defensives while running through your rune, as the dot tick ticks really hard. Alright, lastly the fan favorite Court of Stars. Most groups sap the first mob when exiting the boats, and DH cage act as one so you can cage it and everyone can walk past it. 
Every cast from the construct should be interrupted. However, if you are fighting one alone, charging station can go through as it only heals others near it and not the construct itself. The construct also has a fr frontal targeted on tank, so don't stand on tank. The guards also have a frontal and they cast fortification. This cast can go through as it's only a damage reduction and you can purge it. Mana worms are mostly harmless, but they do explode in a small area when they die, so look out for those. Mana sabers jump uh, to players and do an AoE where they land kind of like uh, the wolves in Halls of Valor, so you wanna avoid stacking. If pulling on the dock, you mostly have to avoid all the AoE frontals and try to DPS from behind. The Arcanists cast Nightfall Orb, which chains up to three players. I'm not sure if this ability is bugged, as I've never actually seen it kill anyone. The Seal Magic cast silences everyone in an area, so you can probably just walk out of that. This dungeon also has sentries and alarm pillars they will try and activate. Kill them before they reach and cast Sound Alarm. This dungeon has an RNG role-playing uh, event that can trigger in the end of the dungeon. It takes around 30 seconds longer than the normal role play. If you want, you can leave one of these pillars up. This will cancel the possibility for the long RP. But uh, also during the first boss, the boss will summon an add per pillar active. As a DH, you can just imprison the add and it will do nothing for the entire fight. Just remember to apply imprison on it so it doesn't run out. If a sentry manages to activate a pillar, it cannot be deactivated. Bound energy mobs just cast an AoE damage zone, so don't be in it. The first boss has three abilities, two AoE zones that you dodge, and one magic debuff, arcane lockdown. To remove this, simply jump three times. On tyrannical weeks, it will wreck you, so try and be quick with it. As an alchemist or rogue, you can also poison the boss's file in the boss area to make the boss die at 25% health instead of getting a buff. Going into the second part of the dungeon, there's a lot of options. Most importantly, you have to kill the three boss adds by killing enforcers or using different items found on the map. These items require different professions, specs or races to use. There are also some items you can use to buff your entire team for the rest of the dungeon. Try to look for the Fell Orb, the Book, or the Flower as a DH. You can also look for the Nightfall Orb if you are a Ballad Elf. Most important mobs to look out for here are the Enforcers. They cast Fell Detonation, which you can line off sight to avoid all damage. The Imps cast Fireballs that can easily one-shot a player. Try and save some damage and uh, AoE Stun or Fear Sigil for this. In addition, the Inquisitors need to be kicked on Searing Galair and stunned on Ice Storm. On the second boss, everyone needs to stack to bait imps from Infernal Eruption. Just dodge the AoE, kill the imps and interrupt boss. This is also a good boss to bloodlust on Tyrannical Weeks. To fight the demon in the next part, you can use Spectral Sight after your team talks to all five chatters. This will help out a lot as no one has to exhaust their brain trying to find the right NPC. When fighting the miniboss, make sure you use stuns or fear sigil on the hypnosis bat to stop its cast. It will die out soon after it's been stopped. On the last boss, you want to dodge all lines as they deal heavy damage. You will also want to use defensive on a slicing maelstorm. Azure Vault is probably my least favorite dungeon. In here you want to avoid whelps at all costs, unless you plan on pulling the packs they wake up. The first pulls have a lot to interrupt. You can CC the mob instead of interrupting as well and it will have the same effect. On the first boss, the most important part is to clear all of the trees with explosive brand. If you leave trees up, the stump will do extra damage and on higher keys it will wipe you very easily. If you have any trees up when the stomp is happening, make sure you use a defensive ability to survive the hit. Just pat on the adds. <laughs> just kidding, just kill the adds with natural cleave and watch out for the AoE they drop. On the platforms, elementals cast Waking Bane. This will make a player go to sleep, so make sure you interrupt or CC these. Crystal Furies will cast Piercing Shards, which is a frontal. 
You want to stop most of this by stunning or fear sigiling there. You can also purge their buff or leave it up if there's a mage who can spell steal it. The big guys do all kinds of AoE spells, which will get even more scary if you don't interrupt Rune Seal Keeper's Icy Bindings, which roots your party for a long time. On the lower platform, there are also Arcane Constructs, which will just do a frontal on the tank. Make sure you don't get hit by it while the tank is dodging them. Before the second boss, you want to clear most of the room. There's nothing new here for DPS except the big Ludnan. Just watch out for his frontal while dodging the AoE on the ground. The second boss can one-shot you pretty easily with Arcane Orb. The tank also will get a cleave regularly on him, so make sure you're behind the boss. The boss also summons adds regularly. Now this usually comes at the same time as cleave, so I recommend emphasizing the cleave on your boss mods. This boss also has an intermission where you kill four adds while dodging arcane bombs. If you are slick, you can hunt uh, an ad through another ad. If you wish to do this, be extra careful of the constant arcane orbs that fly out, as they might just one-shot you. These phases repeat until you defeat the boss. There is a strategy where you pull everything before second boss and jump down straight to third. I'm not sure if this is actually an efficient strategy, but I just wanted to mention it. The next trash rooms are very easy compared to the start of the dungeon. Uh, you have to just dot zones on the ground and do damage. Going into the third boss, you want to put frost bombs on the side of the circle. If you are feeling fancy though, you can also drop them out of the circle. This way you will only take damage from the initial hit and the room will be a bit more spacey. If targeted by Icy Devastator, just move away from others as you will pull AoE damage to nearby targets. This boss will also cast Absolute Zero on a timer. During this time boss has a 99% damage reduction, so just go into a shield bubble with your team. Make sure you go into the same one. I re recommend not using Metamorphosis on the pool. The last boss is in my opinion the most dangerous. Moving puts a slow debuff on you which stacks. Arcane eruption spawns crackling vortexes which can kill you very easily if stood in. At 75, 50 and 25 percent, the boss will also drop detonating crystals which have to be destroyed quickly. As a melee player, you have to be extremely careful that you do the most damage to the crystals while avoiding the vortex zones. They seem to be affected by healing aggro and probably move towards healer but I'm not 100% sure on this. Big tip here is that getting the thundering buff clears you from slow, so you can use it that time to move freely. Hello if you skipped some of the dungeons, or all of them. Uh, or if you watched them, now that all the dungeons are out of the way, let me give you some tips. Use your CC to stop casts. Don't just randomly stun. Most of the mobs will get interrupted and stop casting just like you would have interrupted. Have a reason to press, press your buttons instead of just uh, DRing the mobs. Crowd control has a diminishing returns, that's DR. If you have a stun ready, a heavy comp, randomly three people stun at the same time, every mob will be stun immune for the next 20 seconds. Try as much as you can not to overlap CC. I know this will be hard in pugs, but try to look at how your team plays. If a monk is stunning the first cast every time you pull a pack, try and play around it. Thundering clears slows, and since I beam and the hunt, uh, they are slows. If channeled during thundering, you can fully move in them. You have to predict using Fear Sigil as it's slower than most casts. I will link a weak aura in the description to help with this. It's not 100% correct, but it should get you started at least. Just playing will also give you some experience on how to use uh, Sigil of Misery. Activating Metamorphosis stuns, but it also makes you immune to damage and effects for a short time while in the air. 
Next up, add-ons I think you should be using to get better. First up, uh, Weak Aras. For Demon Hunter Weak Aras, I'm using the Afenar DH set. You probably also want some Weak Aura package for Mythic Plus dungeons. I'll uh, chuck them in the, the description. Also, you'll want a nameplate add-on. I'm using Plater and I have a version of Severian's profile that I have altered. I will link them both in the description. You don't have to use what I'm using, but I think uh, it makes playing trash easier. Now, you want boss mods? I prefer using big wigs and little wigs, but uh, DBM should work just fine. And details, of course, so you can uh, see how much more damage you are doing than the rest of your team. Next up, a few add-ons that I like and uh, they are not required in my opinion. Mythic dungeon tools are a great way to plan out your routes or uh, use already existing ones. I also like OmniCD to see my team's cooldowns. I have it so I only see interrupts at the moment, but uh, it could be configured to see offensive cooldowns and stuns and etc. And pre-made groups filter is great for pugging to filter groups. If you have any more questions or think I missed something important, please leave a comment and uh, have a nice day.